go live. So you can probably pick up the link. All right, we're live. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to Techno Crime Fighters Forum number 70, that's 70. I'm Romola D. This is Romola D. Reports, and I'm here this morning with Dr. Catherine Horton from Switzerland. I'm um, sitting outside on my deck. Uh, this is Quincy, Massachusetts. Um, and it looks like I have an echo. All right, let me take care of that. And... Um, so anyway, this morning we are missing Dr. Millicent Black and Karen Stewart um, because they both have physical therapy sessions. Um, so they may join us later. They, uh, I hope, you know, they might. Um, but if not, it, I think we have a few things to talk about this morning and we'll get right to them. Um, just as an opener, I should tell people who are new who are watching us that um, we're here to have a public conversation about surveillance abuse, not just the surveillance state, the global surveillance state, but surveillance abuse, uh, the abuses, terrors, traumas, and horrors of the global surveillance state, um, completely illegal, illegitimate, and unwarranted extrajudicial and uh, should be openly and publicly exposed. And among those, um, you know, extrajudicial activities that the global uh, terror state is engaging in are the use of electromagnetic weapons and neural weapons on populations. Um, whether they are directed energy weapons that are termed non-lethal weapons or less lethal weapons and being used by your local PD and the local fusion center or uh, being tested by various contractors like General Dynamics and uh, Raytheon and Boeing and BAE and various other defense contractors for the US government and other governments, um, or whether they are neural weapons, acoustic weapons or uh, electromagnetic neural weapons that are indeed interfacing with the brain using brain computer interface chips and uh, BCI technology, or simply, you know, using EMFs or other kinds of RF technologies to um, induce voices, induce sounds, sensations, smells, images, synthetic dreams, what have you, into the human brain. We are living in the age of the invasion of the human brain. And there are some very dark forces in our militaries and intel agencies that are not merely experimenting with these ghastly technologies, they are using them on people. So people do need to speak openly about that and that's what we are all about. So uh, welcome again and um, they've got the plane starting up here. So every time I come sit out here, there are drones, planes, helicopters. So be ready for the show. I might just show you something. Every now and then. <laughs> I can hear them. I think it's basically they've started to route the commercial planes across um, in a diagonal. I don't know if you can see them, but I'll try to show it. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see because the um, the video is too bright. So the contrast yeah. is not there. But what people can do, and actually we should encourage them because there's something called the 24-hour flight tracker or something like that. I think um, well, that's I a think good one. We should find it and put up the link, but it's very, very important. So um, actually, I, I will search for it in a moment. But I think it's called the 24-hour flight tracker. And um, you can see the trajectory of Oh, there's Millicent. Oh, Millicent's here. Wonderful. Hi, Excellent. Millicent. Hi, Millicent. Okay, so uh, you can see the, the flight path of all the uh, commercial airlines. And um, you can you can see that uh, there's an entire flight path, you know, being diverted onto Ramola's house. And um, that <laughs> happens to a lot of people. And uh, it was very hard to believe for a long while people if they, you know, somebody said, oh, I've, I've got all these planes being diverted to fly over my house, you would be laughed at. But now with the 24 hour flight track, you can actually um, see it and screenshot it because what that is about is, first of all, the cartel, the criminal cartel, owns most of the airlines, so it's very easy for them to do. Um, they have money without end, so fuel is not an issue. Um, and it's what they are building is an integrated warfare system. And what many people don't know is that commercial airliners have got military weapons technology uh, loaded onto them. So I think in the UK there was already newspaper articles about the fact that commercial airlines uh, can be in a you know at a 
at the drop of a hat be converted into military planes should that be required because they carry most of the, the parts. I think well, Preston James wrote an article in Veterans Today a couple of years ago touching on this particular subject that indeed um, commercial planes are being outfitted with electronic warfare systems. You know, if you think about it, it's just, it's just going to look like computer equipment. It's just going to be shoved in with the rest of the, um, you know, airplane stuff, the dashboard stuff. So it's probably very easy to hide. Absolutely. I, I think this is exactly what um, what is happening. And uh, what that means is that um, when the crime cartel is starting to do live war games, they will um, pick targets and will, they will try to machine gun them in their homes with these commercial airlines. So you will see commercial airlines diverting to fly over your house because they're trying to, they are mock killing you, they're aiming at you. So that's exactly what's happening. Um, but anyway, so uh, now we're moving towards court cases and uh, the 24 hour flight track is a very good one because you'll see little icons of planes move across and you can screenshot it and then have the exact timestamp, date and uh, time. And then later on, we can request the fly flight logs and find out why exactly those planes were flying that way. You know, And if you do it over a long period of time, that's going to be excellent evidence. But it, it does certainly happen. So I've got some news. I've got some really big news. I've got two really, 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 really big news. Number one, the affidavit template is finished. Hooray! And it is going to be uh, released today. The reason why it's not um, available for download is, as it always happens, the day of, on the release, I found the formatting error, which means I have to go through all the cells and I have to reset the cells and make sure it doesn't come out wonky when you print the PDF. So um, what, I, what I did today, and this is why the show is starting late, because I was late, is I had to flee my home and I went to the local McDonald's where I was trying to, to work um, because the attacks on me became brutal. So the neighbor lady to the west she um, has got the weapon set up and is coming into my home and the neighbors are doing the same thing. So I was working at the McDonald's and um, that went actually excellently. I, I got some work done, but, but I um, eventually when they thought I'm being just too productive, uh, they, they came and I was shot at from little mobile phones and I was trying to film the perpetrators, but I was also blasted by a massive white van. And I think it's called something like the, the Night Express. I've seen vans like that um, already. And it, um, they have a star, a cross on them, which looks a bit like the NATO star. So I think those are actually warfare units and it's a, it might be a fake company. But I have seen them so too many times. And these are massive white vans. So as I was sitting in McDonald's using their Wi-Fi and their, you know, their power sockets, um, great, actually. And their coffee is amazing. But, um, you know, as, as I was sitting there, suddenly I felt, oh, my goodness, my head is about to explode. And then I was trying to figure out who is it in the room. And there was nobody with a mobile phone. And eventually I turned my head and I saw this massive van that had appeared. So um, we really need to um, find out who owns that company. And I think I'm, I'm collecting more and more evidence to pin them now. Um, but anyway, so the, the good news is the affidavit template is finished and the actual collection will start at midnight tonight when the affidavit will be available for download. And um, what that means is that there are also notes being prepared and I will prepare a video to explain how you fill it in and I'll walk um, people through. But what it means is now tonight at midnight will be the, the start, um, the start shot for the race into courts and the race to actually stop these criminal psychopaths. Because later on today, especially Ramola has a video she would like to discuss um, about people now, people being the crime cartel members, openly talking about brain mutilation, giving people brain strokes, crippling people, and they are presenting it as if this was uh, socially accept acceptable. These are the worst Nazi crimes imaginable, you know. So um, now the affidavit template will be a real race into courts because we have to get a court order to stop these people. And if we cannot stop them via court order, the only last resort is a military solution. And the military solution means that somebody needs to go and needs to blow their fucking brains out to stop them. I'm sorry, but this is exactly what it came down to because now one of the things we are certainly seeing is that people are being murdered in droves. So people are being murdered in communities, people are in my family friend circle, people are dying in large numbers, 
and um, victims are contacting me and they are saying, look, all our family members are dying. So these, these Nazi psychopaths, they are not joking. They want us all dead and they've got a very tight schedule that they want more than half of us dead over the next seven years. So um, the murdering has started and it's, um, it's going. And, and unfortunately, any judge who's not going to, uh, you know, follow the rule of law and is going to give us nonsense, well, he has to go on the list and we have to get a military solution for these cor corrupt judges as well. But I don't really want to think about that. What I really want to think about is finding a civilized solution. Um, so th this is it. And this is, I, I'm saying this not to scare you, but I'm saying that to everybody who's listening so that you take this seriously. So this affidavit template took me a lot of work. I nearly died several times doing that. They have severely um, you know, done damage to my body over this period by just retaliatory attacks. So this affidavit template is, is free for you, but for me is, uh, has been developed at a tremendous cost. So the only way that is going to be worthwhile for me and for humanity is if you really help me now, you help me, to, you fill it out honestly, you take part and uh, you help to blow this wide open. And please know that if you are capable of filling this out, for every one of you, there are thousands of people who will not be able to fill this out for some reason, either because they don't have a computer, because they're homeless, or because they're in a personal situation whereby they literally just cannot or are far too scared. So we have to take this seriously. And now it's, uh, it's really, um, I mean, it's now past midnight. In, in terms of this criminality. Uh, fortunately, we do have some um, Secret Service people who are helping us and, and whistleblowers who are helping us, honestly. We also do have some fake whistleblowers who are, I think, covert CIA agents and FBI agents, and we will weed them out. I will really weed them out. Um, every single one I identify, I will just make public because these people are committing crimes against humanity as well. They are lying and they are you know literally slowing us down i've got some birds shrieking in the background ramola i'm, I'm sorry Could you oh just... is that me sorry <laughs> no, I mean, it's not you it's some it's some bird that started up and is screaming its head off in the background i think it's a frequency that just gets amplified but um it's a blue jay <laughs> oh i see that's what they sound like we don't have birds like that over here in switzerland yeah he is shrieking. It's important to be screaming like that in switzerland you know but anyway so um uh the other good news i have and and this shows you again it's kind of good news but also really bad news um and it shows the utter urgency of this matter is um on tuesday i was working with siegfried thomas here in um um, in Switzerland. Um, and um, so he came here I, on last Tuesday, I was in his um, neighborhood and I, we were walking around and um, collecting evidence in, in his um, environment. And that's where we discovered that actually there's a lot of cartel signaling on the front doors of exactly the people that he said uh, later said were involved. Um, and then he came, you know, in return, he came over to me and we were working in our, um, here on Tuesday. And then um, after we talked through the case, um, we went to the to my local police station and, um, you know, in return for me helping him, he um, presented himself, you know, as a as a reporting victim and as a witness and also as, as a witness to the fact that I'm, you know, his um, um, expert witness in his court case. So the most astounding thing unfolded when we went to the police station because we walked in and I said, uh, first of all, we had to wait ages for somebody to turn up. And, uh, you know, it's these people sit five meters away from the little glass cabin because this is a tiny police station. So it was pretty clear no one really wanted to talk to us. But eventually they turned up and... Um, uh, yes, I said, look, he is a prime witness who can say he, he can confirm that he is being assaulted with direct energy weapons. His wife is nearly being killed all the time. He can also confirm that the attacks on women are so much harder. Um, and um, what happened is that the police was utterly uninterested. And I said, but uh, look, he's the main witness. You're the police. Can you just... Take, make a record that we were here, maybe ask him some questions. Are you at all interested? And the guy who said, uh, who was there, he said, no, uh, Mr. Schoch is on the case and it's best to talk to him. And I said, well, yes, but Mr. Thomas is only here today. 
So how about you take some records or some statements from him, for Mr. Schoch, perhaps? But no, he didn't want to do that. And then I said, um, do you even know, do you know about my case? And he said, yes, of course I know about your case. That's the, um, and, and he said, uh, I'm trying to translate from German. He said, this is what everybody is talking about, isn't it? And I said, uh, what do you mean? And he said, well, you, uh, you have sent these letters to the neighbors and now everybody is calling our police station. And at first I didn't even understand because the Swiss word he used for, you know, everybody's calling our phone was Leuten. And in, in German, German, Germany, German, Leuten means somebody's ringing your doorbell. And I thought at first he means, oh, everybody is ringing now my doorbell. And I thought, how the hell does he know that I've got all these perps coming to my door, ringing my doorbell? Because that's true, it happens. And then Siegfried Thomas, who speaks Swiss German so much better than me, he said, he translated, it was a bit like South Park, you know, it's like, what did Kenny just say? And then Siegfried Thomas, so I don't understand, he said, what he's saying is that everybody is calling them on the phone. I said, what? And he said, yes. Uh, you know, and now after you sent the letters, everybody is calling us on the phone. And I thought, well, that is that is really big news because what it means, nobody, no one would be spending, you know, days later and weeks later calling the police station just because they got a letter. You know, no, what these people are calling them about is the attacks on them. And now they say, oh, hang on. This is what's going on in the neighborhood. This is why, you know, this is why we have all these symptoms. This is why we have all these pains. This is why we, we have the feeling that people keep breaking into our home. You know? Catherine, that's absolutely fantastic that the neighbors are taking action. And you know, the thing that, that's great about your letter campaign is you actually spelled out how the radiation um, going through people's walls actually is going to hit them as well. And they are going to come up with weird health symptoms. You know, this is why they've become suddenly arthritic. And this is why they've got heart pains. And this is why they're getting migraines. And they're getting fatter because your hormones are being affected. You know? Exactly. And, and also, I more and more suspect that when pulsed um, shots are, are, are ripping through your body, that the, the cell tissue or the, the, sorry, the cell walls are being damaged. Because something is happening that uh, people start uh, retaining a lot of water. And they, I think there's some sort of cell damage, uh, cell wall damage happening. And I can certainly feel the shots ripping through. And they have tortured me the last couple of days with swelling my legs artificially. So they can do that. Um, but they seem to be machine gunning into people's legs. So if you have odd swelling, mm -hmm. you know, swelling where you feel like, oh, my God, I don't mean you, Ramon. I mean, the, the listeners, you know, where you feel like, oh, my goodness, the, the, the skin is so tight. It feels like the skin is bursting then you're most likely uh, the victim of a directed energy weapon attack. I'm sure. And you know, the other things that people report these days are short-term memory loss, everybody's got dementia and Parkinson's, you know, at the age of 20 and 30 and eight years old. And um, as, uh, you know, a kid in my neighborhood recently um, has been diagnosed with short-term memory loss. We're talking about 11-year-old. Um, so... So there's brain damage being, you know, instituted over here on a large scale, plus fibromyalgia. How often have you heard that? You know, people suddenly developing pains all over their bodies. Really? It's pains all over your bodies? And what are they, what are they connected with? Your nervous system? No, they're connected with these tiny little weapons that anybody can use, you know, and that you wouldn't see because we're talking about invisible radiation and spectrum weapons. Yeah. And the other thing that really opened my eyes is, um, so for those people um, who are new to this, I'm sitting in a metal shed and I'm surrounded by metal. And I'm not just, oops, I'm not just surrounded by metal. I am surrounded by reinforced metal. So there's a metal shed and there are extra layers of aluminium and steel. Okay. And I've bought now all the metal panels of two DIY stores. And I have to keep going to the to new stores in the same chain because they can't get the supply in as fast as I'm buying it just to try to protect myself. This is actually true, right? I've, I've literally bought their supply of, you know, metal panels. Catherine, but I have to say that's a very elegant solution, a shed. I don't know. They have metal sheds over here in the U.S., um, I do recall looking for them at some point. I was looking for everything, you know, even metal lockers, metal coffins to sleep yeah. in. Literally, it's that bad. But mm -hmm. as you know, as you know, 
the some of these weapons they do perhaps they're using scalar tech, scalar wave tech, because they do penetrate certain layers, certain amounts of layers. So you, this is possibly why you're also reinforcing. This is exactly the point I wanted to get to. Is that um, one of the things I discovered? As I, I can now absolutely prove that this is military technology and this is exotic physics, because there shouldn't be anything that I know that can punch through and cause the types of effects like itchy audible loud impact and actual dents into alufoil when you're surrounded by metal and you know when you're sitting on the other side of a wall so in particle physics uh you could cause this sort of effect with a particle beam but the particle beam would have to travel in vacuum okay so if you took for example the large hadron collider and you know you somehow managed to put your hand into the beam well yeah you would get this sort of attack but you could never put your hand into the beam because to maintain the vacuum and even you know contain the beam we we have to have a almost near perfect vacuum because as soon as these electrons at that energy hit a, a single molecule of air they scatter everywhere so in other words in in the time of type of physics i know as soon as you have a wall and you've got several you know bits of metal you you should be protected nothing should be able to create this sort of effect so the fact that i can measure it and i'm going to upload a video um tonight about me filming how i'm going to bed for three hours i'm sleeping for three hours and you can hear the impact non-stop the actual patter of shots against the shielding inside the shielded metal shed now the reason why I'm, I'm really making a big thing out of this is the following if you have this sort of effect after you know three or four layers of metal if you don't have three or four layers of metal and you just have a concrete wall it will go through it like butter so it means it will go through several walls, two, three, four walls. So if anywhere in your neighborhood, somebody's firing these weapons, they might go through two buildings and hit you or hit your baby or hit your children. And when you have all these gang stalkers firing these weapons, what you have is this background, like a machine gunning scatter background that is hitting pretty much everybody, you know, nonstop, 24-7. And I think it's important that you stress things like that, um, Catherine, as you just said, they can hit your babies. They can hit your babies sleeping in their cribs or cradles or beds or whatever. You know, they can hit toddlers. They can hit three-year-olds, five-year-olds. They can hit seven-year-olds. They can hit your children. They can hit your, your parents. They can exactly. hit your elderly parents and make them worse while they're trying to recover from various ailments or surgeries or whatever. And in fact, Ramola, good job you, you emphasized that because we have evidence that it's not just that they can hit the baby. They specifically aim for the babies and the elderly because they want to kill them off. So if you're, if you're um, you know, in the, uh, the wage earning slave uh, um, age, what it means is that productive to the cartel as soon as you become a pensioner you would be drawing a pension that they have stolen a long time ago so they want you dead um if you're a toddler well they they try to control the population so they want to kill all the children they want to kill it off to control the population size so unless you're you know earning a big buck and i don't know if you're a contract killer for the crime cartel you're probably safe you know up to a point until they want to get rid of you too but unless you're contract killer for the crime cartel you are just totally disposable if your child or baby you're an active target because of the genocide program and if you're elderly forget it you might as well just snuff it today you know that, that that's basically it yeah and also we shouldn't forget that they're using neurotech you know um so this is why, um, you know, I don't know, I was recently writing, I haven't finished this little Twitter fact or fiction marathon that I started. I don't know if you saw some of my tweets, um, but I kind of riffed on that lone wolf terrorist, uh, domestic terrorist man there. <laughs> and I'm having a lot of fun, but I'm also putting out the actuality of what's going on. You know, um, it's obviously under using the vehicle of fiction, the thin vehicle of fiction. It's fact or fiction. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, one of the things that I said there was, and that I think it's important to remind ourselves of is, um, the neurotech currently has advanced to such a point where literally it can, it's like point and shoot. They can neurotech babies to scream. They can neurotech children to scream. And they are indeed doing that. If you've ever traveled on a plane recently, you know, you might have noticed that there are certain bursts of extreme sound chaos eruptions. 
And um, I submit that these are completely contrived with neurotechnology that's being that's being aimed at people so if there's a target on a plane and they're unable to hit that target continuously for any for whatever purpose whatever reason you know whether it's shielding or this person has moved or whatever they start hitting everybody around and they especially hit the babies and make them scream so um for those of you who think that this is you know sci-fi hi-fi beyond the conception of possibility etc you need to go to um, James Giordano's videos online on YouTube and just check them out. And one of them I will indeed play a little bit of a little bit later called uh, From Bench to Battlefield, Brain Science from Bench to Battlefield. And he literally, I mean, this is a guy who's working very much inside the military, inside the intelligence agencies, is perfectly aware that people are being targeted, people are being experimented on, and people are being assaulted with neurotech. Uh, he speaks openly about this neurotech. But he speaks about it from the point of view of a top military st strategist, who, by the way, is also a quote unquote neuroethicist, which is totally a case of the fox guarding the hen house. When, you know, when military neuroweapon designers and makers, when military neuroscientists come along and tell the rest of us that they are neuroethicists, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to relegate you to the back of the room and, you know, listen to all of the other people who are true ethicists and true human rights advocates first before I listen to you. Because clearly this is an attempt to totally take over the field to say, oh, yes, we neuroethicists are looking at it. We're examining all of this very closely. You know, the brain is now completely malleable, completely open, completely accessible, but we neuroethicists are here to make sure that humanity is safe, everything is being done for the public good, for the moral good, you know, public health. Surveillance is actually public health, and that indeed is something he says in his video, in his little talk that he gave at Lawrence Livermore National Labs last year, a video that's been circulating among many of us, thanks to Dr. Ed Spencer, finding it, um, you know, while he was sitting in a hospital bed himself and uh, sending it out to other people. So, um, you know, could, could you bring it up um, on your screen? Just right so now? Can, okay, sure. sure. Let me, um, I, I haven't seen it yet because I was, um, I was busy. So I missed out on all this correspondence. And I think from you gave me a brief description. And from what I've heard, it is it is just a mind blowing interview. It where is. Time, ah, as Millicent reappeared. Okay, here it is. This is the video. Oh, and it's uh, open at, at this um, slide, as you can tell, which talks about how these neural weapons are being well, used. Just a second, because all I see is I see your browser and uh, I think a, a previous version of the Techno Forum. No, it's oh. just number 70. I see number 70, but I just see still images. Okay, <laughs> they are very slowly showing it to you, I think, because that's where I started. And now I'm looking at this screen with the slide. You're not there yet? No, it's not. On my end, it's not showing yet. Okay. I, can, I can see, I can check if I can see it on the, no, in the, cha in the uh, YouTube video, it's also not showing yet. It's not showing yet. Well, I'll let you know as soon as it's Not it yet. Okay. Because that's it's showing over here at my end. Let me see if I can close some other windows. Maybe that will help. Yeah, maybe close the one which just has restore session in the Techno Crime Fighters current episode. That seems to be a, a browser with just two tabs. I did close it. That's still showing at your end. Yeah. Uh, alternatively, stop sharing your screen and restart sharing the screen. Maybe it's. Uh, oh, that's a good idea. Okay, yeah. let me do that. Yes, this this very much looks like a hack to me. Yeah. Uh, All right. I've stopped at this point. Let me just close the other windows and then go back to sharing. Because one of the things I wanted to say about this guy is that we have to remember that when you're dealing with people in the military or the secret services, like Gina Haspel, um, the, the way the selection process works is by the, the time you reach these people near or at the top, you are, it's, it's almost psychopathy pure. So when you're dealing with these sadistic uh, psychopaths, one of their key traits is pathological lying. So uh, they actually make a sport out of pathological lying. So when he com you know, presents himself as a neuroethicist, well, this is, this is an example of pathological lying and what he actually is as a Nazi psychopath uh, preparing to brain mutilate children so that his own offspring can look better while everybody else is brain mutilated. And we are talking about babies being brain mutilated in, in, in the cribs, okay? In your own home. 
and you have no control over it because as soon as you give birth, you register your baby, the, the government, which is now in deep capture by the organized crime cartel, knows that there's a baby. You know, if the baby makes it through to school, it will put be put through an IQ test, like happened to me. I didn't even know what uh, what an IQ test was. And then they will farm the babies and they will decide, do we want this baby to stay at the very high IQ or do we want to decrease the IQ? Do we want to brain mutilate the baby and damage its brain forever? The parents would never know what happened. I'm yeah, and they're doing a lot more than that as well. You know, they are uh, um, over here in the US, I think it was last year, or may, actually, no, it was September 2015. Um, Barack Obama approved, or what, well, he issued, I guess those guys issue these executive orders. He issued an executive order permitting psyops on the populace. It was basically called behavioral science research to permit people to function better in society, to help them in so many ways when they're sick, to, to nudge them toward the right treatment, etc. So basically, you know, he approved PSYOPs, you know, he approved COINTELPRO under the aegis of uh, behavioral science research. Um, and as, as a result of that, not merely now are people being neuroattacked to brain damage them, people are being swarmed so that suddenly, if you have a very bright kid, you know, and I say this, having a very bright kid, and I'm just noticing the shenanigans around myself and around her, uh, you have a very bright kid, uh, you suddenly start getting suggestions from people around, you know, from the dog sitter, from the babysitter, from the, from the teacher, from the, from the male lady, anybody you speak to. Oh, your daughter does such lovely art. Do you think she should take some art lessons? Can you push her in the direction of art instead of math or writing or anything to do with cognition? You know, well, not that art isn't, but you know, it's yeah. a little safer than mm -hmm. having this kid think on her feet and speak her mind. So that kind of thing is also going on, you know, this kind of nudge yeah. behavior. So all these psyops in connection and conjunction with the neurotaking, this is total social takeover. That is really what's going on. And if you want, I can try to share the screen, share my screen again at this point. I, I, I we absolutely have to see this because I think that guy is uh, is actually one of the criminals we need to. Yes, now I can see the slide. Okay, so here's the slide, and what this slide is talking about is the three modalities of um, assaulting the brain. First, you assess somebody's brain potential, then you access their brain with various technologies, and then you target the brain. Literally, you damage the brain. So let me just play a little bit of this clip and you can hear him talking. Actually, just a second, because I can't hear it. Can you maybe increase your volume to the maximum? Yeah, I did. Maybe your speaker volume, because I think you're... Um, Oh, well, I know why, because you're having headphones. If you pull out the headphones, like I think it has to go out of the speakers and back into the microphone. Remove the headphones? Yes, okay. yes. And then let, let the, um, the speakers actually just blare it out. Yes, now I can hear it. Better? Yeah. Hang on, now I stopped being able to hear it. Oh, really? There's something going on because, no, we can't hear it. You can't hear it anymore. No, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to bring it up. Sorry, maybe it's... Okay, it's why don't you bring it up? Uh, here, let yeah, me because the let's just Let's just start. So you type James Giordano. You'll get it right on top. It's bench to battlefield. Um, hang on, bench to battlefield. Ah, oh, yes, 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 I see it. You yes. got it? Yeah, I got it. All right, so why don't I stop sharing? Uh, and let's see, maybe it works on my end. Yeah. Because we have to, I, I encourage everybody to have a good look at this man who I already have over. Um, hang on, this guy. I already up over say that he's very likely a clinical psychopath. Uh, let's just, yeah, I think you were at 16 minutes or something. Yes. Yeah, this is a very vital video for everybody to watch. Pulse signal, Can you hear? Not only to be able to image yes. certain brain yes. areas, but also to image tracts, uh, communicating networks and nodes within the brain in a directional way in, in rather rapid time. 
I can utilize neurophysiological recordings such as electroencephalography, and I've dialed in the specificity of that as well through the use of quantitative technique. This guy's a neuroscientist, but he's a military neuroscientist. We can look at genetic yeah. profiles of individuals and groups to be able to determine what genes may be, in fact, coding for certain structures and functions of the brain. I can utilize proteomics and other forms of biomarkers, and I can utilize neurocyber informatics. In other words, I can harness all of these forms of assessments to a big data approach that allow me to make both comparatives and normative indices, not only within an individual, but between individuals, not only between individuals, but within and between groups on a variety of scales. So the idea of assessment technology in many ways combines each and all of these and the combinatory power of that is facilitated and fortified through the use of big data. We've written comprehensively about the use of big data as a force multiplier in neuroscience and neuroweaponology. And if you're interested, I'd be happy to provide that to you. Neuroweaponology. Let's just stop here. Neuroweaponology. And already here, I can link this to many, many things. Number one, he's talking about identifying genetics. Guys, if you know anything about the crime cartel, what this means is you have certain crime mafia families with their bloodlines, the Rothschilds being one of them, okay? Now, these guys take, even if they just, you know, happen to shag a random woman, they just take the children and they try to plant them into public life, okay? All their legitimate and illegitimate children will just appear somewhere. So what these people are talking about is the crime cartel wants to preserve their genetics and they want to exterminate yours. Absolutely. So unless you're, you're part of those 13 bloodlines, you're screwed, okay? They want to exterminate you and they want to brain mutilate you. Now, the brain mutilation is already happening to me. And I'm so glad. I mean, actually, this guy, I'm, it's wonderful he went public with his talk because he just earned himself an entry ticket for the biggest court cases for crimes against humanity. And he is on my list as one of the main suspects because he works exactly exactly to the T on what is being done to targets. So I think he's one of the war criminals actually actively uh, data farming uh, uh, targets because he would be a fool not to. He's um, in the military, he's got classification to cover his ass and he works right on this stuff and apparently he wants to be top dog in the field. Yes, and he actually admits that indeed this stuff is being tested. It's being used on people. You know, he actually openly says it. There's huge amounts of disclosure in this. He's a very smooth talker, as you can tell. He doesn't stop talking. And the whole intention and modality in which this presentation is being made suggests to me that what they are doing is attempting to gain consent from mm -hmm. humanity, from Americans, from people watching this, you know, gain consent by shutting up and saying nothing. Now, this was actually reported. This is from August 2017. It was reported very minimally in the press. I looked up an article at, in The Independent about it. And, you know, my God, it's as, as if, you know, it's as, as if a troglodyte who can't write English wrote it. It's not, it's not as if a journalist wrote it. Now, if a journalist would actually write a report on this video, as I am going to do shortly, you would have to not merely report what he said, but examine the implications of what he is saying. None of this was covered. It was very briefly summarized. A couple of things and a couple of conferences that he mentioned were pointed to, and that's about it. You can look up the article. It's in the Independent. You know, I, I would, I would, gosh, I would say first of all, the uh, we now know, um, you know, that the, the newspapers are owned by the crime cartel, so the the these days, when you have mainstream media, the person writing the article is not a journalist anymore. He's either a, a secret service agent, an Operation, Operation Mockingbird plant, or he's an all-out, uh, you know, honest member of the organized crime cartel. You know, the, yeah. the, the article was written either by a bloody agent or criminal, you know, which is really, I mean, you know, saying the same thing. But um, So in I other words, they were glossing it over. So they put this out there. He actually has this conversation. This, this talk was given at Lawrence Livermore. There were students there. There were professors there. There were people from various fields there in that room. Okay, but it was also military research. And it's, I think Lawrence Livermore is obviously, you know, it's got lots of contracts, military contracts, military and intelligence contracts. So this, this whole, this, the, the forum in which this talk was given was a military intelligence and a academic forum. And mm -hmm. as soon as this talk was given, it's not remarked upon by the fourth estate, by, by the press, you know. Mm -hmm. 
So this is shocking. So I, I would say, um, you know, you are going to write a, a press article, Ramola, because you're a journalist. Yes. Um, I'm a scientist and a criminal investigator, and I will do what I will do, which is include this in the upcoming court cases as lead evidence for war criminality and war crimes in action, here being openly confessed to by this guy. I already have a stack of researchers that are in for it, um, including a British uh, uh, British scientist who's giving a talk about neuroscience and is referring to 500,000 um uh, what's it called, like genetic uh, samples and blood samples taken from people. Sorry, five, yeah, 500,000, exactly. And as I was listening to the talk, I was thinking, hey, uh, my friend, you show me half a million consent forms you have collected. Show me half a million. That's a lot of paper, my friend, to collect half a million consent forms. And I put my money on the fact you haven't got it. So you took blood samples from people at, on the NHS without ever asking them or by giving them some gen generic, uh, you know, uh, acceptance form of, well, you know, the NHS might use your data and you think, okay, they're using it because they have to get the computer. That's right. And in fact, mm -hmm. Catherine, I think that is exactly what they are doing. They're doing it sneakily. So when you go to give your, give blood for a test at the, at the local hospital, for whatever reason, you know, they sit you down and guess what? They don't take one vial. They don't take two vials. They take three vials. Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. And this genetic business is a very, very, uh, very important. Okay, so I want to show you something that is directly relevant to this. Um, but first of all, I want to show everybody, okay, guys, if you're a victim, what you're going to do is the following. You're going to look up, you know, this guy, James Giordano, and you're going to look for bench to battlefield. Then you're going to double click the URL, control copy, you're going to open a tab. You're going to type clipconverter.cc. Okay, you're going to paste the URL here and you're going to download this little thing because this is going to be key evidence. Sorry, this is adverts. Yeah, you please download this video. Preserve this video before exactly. it's removed. Yeah. And you're burning it onto CD and you'll be quoting this in your court cases because this brain mutilation, which is what it actually is, that he's talking about, this is what's being done to you. So I, I wanted to report today that they have shot me in the head so so much. I've got now difficulties with coordination, with balance. They've also shot into my inner ear to damage my balance. And um, this is exactly what's being what's going to be done to you, to your children as well. At school, where you don't have any control over it, okay? And then, I, sh I should also point out that one of the things he's talking about is dual-use technologies. Now, if everybody saw that article on Robert David Steele's website yesterday, the Mongoose article about non-lethal weapons, which posts oh, something from 1993. Can you, can you share your screen? That's because people, <laughs> people have to see what that is. Yeah, I should pull it up. Let me pull it up. And uh, But if you look at that article, you will find that somebody, an alert reader supposedly, has stated that um, acoustic te technology is putting voices into people's skulls, um, actually, what does it really say? Oh, I've got the page. Okay, let me share the screen right now. And you can see what I can see. Hopefully, do you see it? So non-lethal directed energy acoustic weapons in the USA, words in your head, words in your mouth, the ultimate false flag scripting. So I do request that people uh, read this article and make comments. I don't know if you can make comments on this website, but perhaps you can, you know, post your comments online somewhere. Um, so this, this particular article talks about a few things. And one of the things it talks about is uh, V2K. Okay, it talks about two documents that have been released, and I'll talk about them in just a minute. But um, I took exception to one statement over here that um, really, where is that statement? Has it been removed? Oh, no, here it is. Okay. So basically, if you look right at the top, this is the technology being released in current use in 1992 timeframe. What's now used is incredibly advanced, best described as remote induction, soft style, no voices heard, but attitudes shaped. So basically they're talking about synthetic telepathy that's putting uh, subliminal messaging into people's heads very slowly and subtly, except for controlled experiments like the DNC demonstrations of college students whose leaders are paid and the followers are targeted with mass soft remote induction.
Now, the person who has written this says, remote soft induction is now the norm, but voice to skull is periodically tested and deployed to see how effective its capabilities can be in selected unstable or mentally ill targets. <laughs> now, I do know that people who are watching this who are perfectly aware of what voice to skull is and some of whom are indeed reporting that it's being used on them, will know that this is not exactly true. Voice to skull is currently being deployed and tested, not on mentally ill people, but on perfectly well, perfectly mentally healthy people, people in fact who are highly accomplished most usually, high, high IQ targets, people who are highly productive, highly vocal, you know, just smart, strong people in our communities. Voice to skull is being used on people like that. Why? Because it's being used as a neuro weapon to suppress, assault, abuse them internally and mentally with voices, sounds, and abusive scripts. We've all heard and know about the abusive scripts used in voice to skull. And in fact, Dr. Robert Duncan recently spoke about this on Facebook um, in a series of posts that uh, someone captured and which I will put on Twitter shortly. I know it's taken me a little while, but I'll get there. I'll put those posts out. But basically, he talks about the same kind of thing that's in his books and that you know has been spoken about ad infinitum. Voice to skull is being used as a neuro weapon to terrorize, threaten, intimidate, put down, deprecate, dismiss, decry, and really um, annoy and assault people nonstop, as well as uh, abuse. I mean, that's nothing but abuse. It's a verbal neuro abuse, nonstop verbal neuro abuse that goes on. So that's how voice to skull is being used. It's not being used on selected, unstable, or mentally ill targets. Who is this alert reader? I wonder. Um, you know, now I don't think we're going to find, be able to find out who exactly wrote this comment unless this person identifies himself or herself. But um, I can state unequivocally that this is not exactly true that this um, voice to skull is being used on mentally well people and not mentally ill people. In fact, it's, you know, as we know, hearing voices is still being seen by a psychiatrist as a sign of schizophrenia and delusions and hallucinations, etc. So it's being used to project the symptomology of mental illness, if anything. No, now, the sorry. sorry. That's all right. The other thing I just wanted to say was this, you know, 1993 non-lethal Los Alamos conference uh, agenda that's posted over here. It is very interesting for people who haven't seen it before. You know, take a look at this PDF because it talks about what these guys, military and intelligence guys, got together in 93, I think at jo or Los Alamos, it was at Los Alamos, um, to, t to talk about. And they talked about, um, if you look closely, the biological challenges, non-lethal research, uh, fracture and dynamic behavior, biotech and structural ceramics. Actually, let me go down to the next page. That's more. There we go. You'll see who's involved as well, right? And you'll see Dr. John Alexander talking about non-lethal defense technology, peacekeeping and peace enforcement operations. Now, this is what I actually started off to say before I got into this, and that was what they did in 94 was a memorandum of understanding was drawn between the DOD and the DOJ talking about class of joint development of classified non-lethal dual use technologies. And this dual use, what it really means is dual use both by the local police, right, for law enforcement purposes, supposedly, and by the defense for defense purposes, or really assault weapon purposes is what it really means. Now, this, this term peace enforcement is, as you can tell, very eyebrow raising, is it not? peace enforcement? How do you enforce the peace? Perhaps with non-lethal weapons, hitting people, giving them arthritis so they can't move, you know, hitting their vocal cords so they can't speak, hitting their brains so they have strokes. So the way this is being rolled out is incredibly sinister. And every educated person on the planet needs to wake up, start looking into this, and start taking action and start speaking out. Are we going to let the entire surveillance defense military apparatus simply take over this field and say that it's perfectly okay to hit people from a remove at a distance with radiation and sonic weapons, call it non-lethal, call it peace enforcement, peacekeeping, and get away with it? Because that's really what this is all about, you know? And the other terms, of course, are less than lethal. You can see, oh, what have I done? 
as you can see going down over there i i this is this is great i've got already a list of things that i i would like to flag if you could just scroll back up to the um to the pictures of these these researchers with edward teller there and and all these other guys yes stop there exactly okay. all right look at the middle image and ask yourself in such a document why is the middle guy uh shown with a satanic pentagram in the in the image excellent point yeah no. we're talking about the dark side of the military here we're talking about the satanists in the military running these non-lethal weapons non-lethal weapons equations satanism I think and, we can conclude that exactly. and look at the image at the bottom that that uh, well certainly on this photocopy it looks like a devil's head you know and um if you go through at first it just it seems coincidence but as you're reading more and more cartel documents they are openly gloating about being satanic being devils being into murdering and maiming and mutilating and satanism is just a fetishization of psychopathy so these people these men and this is why i see all these men because psychopathy is much more um you know prevalent in men than women and the honorable janet reno let us not forget you know because she was the attorney general of the united states she was in a highly power position you know a huge power position yeah. I mean, and she was able to roll these weapons out exactly they are they are psychopathic women as well i mean see gina haskell but um in this document so this is already uh you know worth a lot but my question to uh could you could you go back to the main uh, website because this is a great document to have i agree this is uh this is wonderful um so anyway that talks about a lot of the technologies you know that they were actually looking at optical acoustic etc so that's definitely worth looking at um and then of course there are these letters from julianne mckinney who was oh, let's see the um the person who founded the electronic oh have i come back to the same one no actually no let me go further down because i think here we go uh there we go so she was the founder of this electronic surveillance project association of national security alumni and she's uh, this is a letter that she's written to janet reno about the death of somebody you know and it's a kind of a complicated story so it's worth reading to find out what that's all about mm -hmm. um and but she does she does spell spell out that she wants she's looking for permission to attend this conference to ensure that the fate of human and civil rights in this country are not ultimately decided by a second one c conference and i don't know the reference there entirely um but uh, it sounds like another fake conference from the past um oh, actually if you, if you go go back up the the what it's it's one conference that's a germ that was in germany wasn't that a nazi conference where they decided to just to basically take over the entire planet because there was so okay okay maybe that's it yeah is, i'm asking for permission to attend this upcoming event to ensure that the fate of human and civil rights in this country are not ultimately decided by a second vanze conference so i think the vanze conference I, i i haven't got it in my memory banks right now which exact conference that was but i i think i remember uh that christopher story um you know uh aka edward hall was talking about that and then i think it was at the vanze conference that all these nazi you know uh leaders decided that they are going to take over planet earth and they're going I to take the entire yeah it does world. sound like a second wednesday conference then you know because they decided to take it over near weapon wise but according to what james giordano says in that other video from august 2017 they are actually meeting regularly they are having uh, he he mentioned a european conference on dual use technologies yeah. so i think dual use technologies that dual use is is a very um you know sort of um giving away a lot kind of keyword it's um because it's pointing to what they are doing oh wait don't, don't how they're hiding it yeah don't close it yet don't close it yet i saw you have over the close button <laughs> exactly oh. i i this is this is fantastic to bring it up and this is a great absolutely great document to have um and we should download it before it disappears and put it in our court cases mm -hmm. we'll just go back to the to the website of uh, yeah, let me do that you know, I, I just have a few comments to make. This is an article that just came out, literally hot off the press yesterday. Okay, and this is about uh, you know the the prevalence of neurotechnology and voice to skull. And I'm sorry if you go back up to the sentence about the mentally ill people. By the way, that smiling guy on the right, Robert David Steele, is the founder of the site, so we can hold him responsible for what appears on here. And there's the sentence: uh, remote soft induction is now the norm. remote soft induction what exactly is that it is uh you know the organized crime cartel 
brain fucking you guys, okay? Everywhere, wherever you go and you don't even notice. You're being brain mutilated and your brain state is being changed by a bunch of um, child raping, psychopathic degenerates. That's what it means. And that's and, apparently the norm, you know? And this is frequently referred to as mind control technologies, etc. And those of you who have studied HARP and studied ELFs, etc., understand how they are doing it. Because we are talking about extremely low frequencies. The brain transmits and receives at extremely low frequencies. And exactly. And now, if we, if you con consider, he's, he, this is now Robert David Steele, as far as I'm aware, is uh, a previous, uh, he's a, an ex-CIA uh, covert ops guy, okay? So there's this CIA covert ops guy who should really know the ins and outs of all this stuff, okay? And in the olden days, at least officially on paper, the CIA used to at least pretend it's trying to protect American citizens in some form or another, but I think it has done away with that uh, now, you know, for a long time. But anyway, then this guy is smearing what he actually, what's happening that is on his website, there is some sort of, you know, unsubstantiated claim that voice to skull is periodically tested and deployed to see how effective its capabilities can be in selected, unstable or mentally ill targets. What he says is that if you have voice to skull, you must be one of these specially selected unstable or mentally ill targets. And then you have this, this grinning face on the right-hand side. By the way, Robert David Steele knows exactly what's going on because we were trying to inform him for a very long time. Okay. Yeah. So I, I have to say in his defense, though, as, as you know, Catherine, I contacted him yesterday and we had a bit of an exchange and um, a few of us were privy to a few back and forths over there. Uh, one of the things that Robert David Steele did indeed tell me is that he's open to publishing articles from me on his website. Hallelujah. And that this... You know, he has actually published a couple articles for me before. One was the Roman E. Besacer article, you know, the big one about when she was, um, you know, first convicted, etc. And the other is, you know, because Roman E. Besacer, if people don't know, is a living Manchurian candidate, um, in my estimation and the estimation of various others. Um, and in her own estimation, because she has talked about being brain shipped and doing things that she that were not herself, that she was, she let, she stabbed somebody and apparently this other woman died. Um, and now she's in jail for life and her court dates keep shift, keep getting shifted year after year. Um, so, you know, extra, extraordinary case from Toronto and I wrote about it. Um, I also wrote an article on neurohacking, one of the Romani Bissesa follow-up articles that he published, I think. So, he did suggest to me that he's open to publishing other articles over here. And my hope is, as you know, I continue to write on this subject and publish on this subject. My hope is that I can send him links to some of my articles and he will continue to publish them, particularly one to combat this one, because I don't think this is the truth. And, you know, this is why I wrote to him last night in the first place. Um, mm -hmm. This is not the truth about V2K, right? I mean, um, this is outrageous. I'm so glad you wrote to him, but this is absolutely egregious. But I just don't buy uh, the fact that after, you know, all this time, you know, we have to educate the CIA special ops, ops guy. He knows exactly what's going on. He knows absolutely exactly what's going on. And that's why I was so absolutely furious. And, and by the way, we're not even talking about his in, 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 imitable style that, you know, reminded me strongly of Dr. Robert Duncan. But anyway, you know, sociopathy aside, um, you know, one of the questions I have to this guy is, OK, now, you know, now in, in 2018, an article appears on this where he's smearing the V2K victims. OK, well, I can show him people from public life who get V2K. I can show him x-rays where you can see the military technology, you know, uh, actually implanted in people's heads that's transmitting the voices. And then this rubbish appears on his website. But my question to Robert David Steele is, in 2018, he just has two documents from 93. That's 25 years ago, Robert. Like the two documents for 25 years ago. Yes, but you see, that's very uh, CIA style. And I suspect yeah. that's this, that's what the CIA is hoping to do again. What they're hoping to do again is first torment, uh, torture and assault thousands, if not millions of people with B2K, with various kinds of neurotech. And then 20 years down the road, come along and say, oh, yeah, there were some experiments. We tortured some folk. 
you know, and think they can get away with it. And oh, maybe there'll be another Richard Helms to say, oh, 20,000, uh, you know, pages of files were shredded by mistake. Or uh, like Gina Haspel, you know, 90 videos were just uh, thrown in the bin by mistake. We simply can't find them. Um, so that's their style. That's what they do. Um, you know, very interestingly, in one of my conversations with Barbara Hartwell, the, the most recent one, I think, and, you know, she's ex-CIA, she's a CIA whistleblower. She said that she did not believe for one minute that the MK Ultra files had disappeared. She Absolutely. said, that's the cover story. They yes. most definitely have the files, she says. You know, Absolutely. to me, that's really interesting. By the way, we can prove that that's the case. We can absolutely prove that that's the case. Um, and I will prove that everybody convinced me in the next couple of minutes. But before I, before we move on to MK Ultra, I just would like to point out something that, um, you know, uh, that was pointed out to us yesterday by one of our trusted friends. And it even escaped, it, not even, I mean, it just escaped my attention, okay? And I felt like a right fool when he pointed it out. But look at the URL. It says HTTPS and then slash slash phi beta iota dot net. And this guy said to us, well, I do remember my ancient Greek and phi beta iota stands for FBI. So we've got FBI dot net saying that, you know, everybody who gets voice to skull is a selected target who is mentally unstable. Well, you know, go and boil your head, Robert David Steele, you know. Literally, that's what I have to say. This is shocking. This is this is criminal disinformation. We've got crimes against humanity happening. Disabled people, children, and elderly people are being tortured to death with the voice to skull military technology with these bone conduction and ear implants being blasted into their heads all the way to their deathbed. And then we've got the CIA specials ops guy running an FBI.net website saying that all these people are selected because they're mentally unstable. I mean, come on, you know. Yeah, yeah it seems like, you know, the CIA, the FBI, they have so many weird covers. They have so many weird compartments. They keep things from each other. There's infighting. They're fighting with each other or they're working together. You, you really can't tell, you know. So there's all sorts of weird mayhem going on. Um, it's, it's very hard to tell what's going on. One of the things that I thought for for this particular website and for Robert David Steele, um, asking, for instance, for my articles or being open to publishing some articles, which unfortunately are putting out disinfo, is, is, is the speculation that because of compartmentalization and because of their oaths of secrecy, et cetera, they cannot come right out and say, yes, we know this is happening. Oh, you but know, you know what? Pramula, but we prefer if somebody like you say that it's happening. Yeah, but your limited knowledge, completely outside the intelligence. I can, I can, I can actually, uh, you know, blow. I know you. I know what you're, you're, what you're doing here, and this, this is actually very good that you, you do it like that. But I can, I can actually blow that argument out of the water uh, for two reasons. Because he knows what's going on, and we can prove that he knows what's going on because he was included on the emails exchanges where we're discussing these things. So that's from behind the scenes. We know that he knows what's going on, but. If he was scared uh, to speak outright, he would not put out active disinfo that smears again victims of crimes against humanity with the old, you know, CIA's, you know, dumb as f nonsense of oh they are mentally unstable. He actively damages people' reputation. This is libel. This guy put it into writing. And you know this thing of, oh, an alert reader and not even identifying it. Oh, come on, Robert, you wrote that. There was no alert reader. That's why there's no name attached or some sort of further details. You wrote that, Robert. I suspect you to, uh, you know, satisfy your employer, the FBI or the CIA or whoever that is these days. So this is absolute nonsense. The other thing is if you scroll back up and look at his logo, just look at the logo. Everybody who studies cartel signaling, that, right, right there, you've got again the cross. The cross of Malta? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, there are several incarnations of the Maltese cross and this and that cross, but basically it's always the, the same Swiss cross because that's what all this is coming from. It's the, it's the Vatican Intel's, you know, military arm. And then when you zoom into that logo, there's a, I think there's a dagger, a feather, and the shovel 
I think the shovel is, you know, you know, digging yourself in deep. That's what you just did, Robert. But, uh, you know, what's the dagger? I think this is, this is what this spells out, that logo. This is Black Ops. You know, the dagger is on the left-hand side, the feather on the right-hand side, a ring at the top. Oh, yes, a ring. A ring of Black op Ops guys digging themselves in. That's what it reads to me, this logo here. I mean, this is shocking. Shocking. And sorry, you haven't worked in the CIA all your life and you don't know cartel signaling and it's someone like me who has to tell you? I, I don't think so, Robert. I mean, this is this is getting a, you know, dislike from me. Totally yeah, well, awesome. you know, I don't know, this whole thing, the whole U.S. ink, the flag, yeah. um, et cetera. And, and let's not forget, that, so. let's not forget Robert David Steele. I just, I just, uh, you know, uncovered last week how he was the guy putting forward the soft landing approach while his mates in the CIA, should they ever be cut from the governmental funds, which is earning them a big fat paycheck, should they ever be cut from that, either as a government employee or even as a contractor, they should get a year's worth of salary when they get re made redundant. So who, whoever says something like that, you know, who, who on planet Earth gets one year's pay when they get the sack for having done not just an atrocious job, but having actually committed crimes against humanity. You know, it's a mafia. A mafia or, uh, operates like that. And there's a, him advocating mafia practices to all of us. Yes, but unfortunately, it's um, okay. I, I really don't know how to resolve this in terms of, you know, how... Um, how we address it. Uh, what I can only say is that we continue putting out the truth, you know, that's right. and that's something we are not compromising on ever. We are never going to soft pedal. We are never going to cover up the truth, you know. We're never going to be publishing these lying articles <laughs> that put out disinfo. We are never going to do that. Other people may do it, but we are never going to do it. Yeah, so. pe people, if you want to know the truth, you go to everydayconcerned.net. Not phibetaiota.net, no, everydayconcerned.net. That's Ramola's website. She's been reporting for three years about the full truth and nothing but the truth. Please go there and educate yourself about how your children are going to be not just brain mutilated, but they're also going to be put under radio hypnosis and maybe even raped at school and farmed out to politicians who want to, you know, get it fresh meat. Because this is what seems to be happening at, at, uh, in Columbia, Tennessee you know, as Millicent uncovered. So this is the truth, guys. This is what's actually happening. And you only find it on Ramola's website, not on Robert David Steele's, you know, Matt Hat's, I don't know, I don't even want to call them articles. Just. Well, so in any case, you know, to come back to that issue that we were talking about, just to go back very briefly to James Giordano's, um, what was talked about on Rob David Steele's website and what is being talked about by James Giordano are these dual use technologies, which are in a sense justifying what the DOD is doing, what the DOJ is doing. Now, when you say DOJ, remember, we're talking about police departments, we're talking about the FBI, and we're talking about DHS because today we've got the Department of Homeland Security and they're all working hand in hand through the fusion centers. So these dual use technologies are law enforcement and apparently peace enforcement technologies that people like jo uh, James Giordano are touting. Now, you know, he's got some other really juicy graphs, uh, slides over here. Let me see if I can find another one. Oh, yeah, this is some very, okay, here, maybe um, Catherine would like to comment on this. Oh, hang on a second, because on your end, we can't hear it. Just tell me the minute mark. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, and then people can uh, can hear it. I'll, I'll bring it up. Um, oh, wait, 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 this one's a good one. Okay, just let me know which minute. This, this is 1317, I think. I saw this one at the soft web. Okay, hang on. Let's let's listen all to 1317. And everybody who's listening, make notes because this is important for court cases. Okay, I'm playing it now. I hope you can uh, you can hear it. Both dimensions, soft weaponizability and hard weaponizability. In the former sense, we're seeing that the neurosciences can be used to gain economic leverage. Not least of which is because neuroscience and technology commands and captures 175 billion with a B 
dollar annual market space. There's a tremendous amount of global economic leverage that can be occurred and affected, but can also be used for somewhat softer applications in the national security space, inclusive of intelligence purposes and the use of neuro and cognitive sciences to develop insights to and techniques for psychological operations and information systems, what is referred to in military parlance as PSYOPs and MISO. Whoa, 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 yeah. oh my God, oh yeah. my God. Oh my God, let me let me stop because this guy just blew my mind. Can I just go through this? Uh, you really, I mean, you have. We have to actually take this video apart bit by yeah. bit because there is so much massive disclosure in here. Yes, you know? exactly. And and when we're taking this apart from Ola, we should also sit down and immediately write the charge sheet for court <laughs> yeah. because this guy needs to be. He needs to be dragged to Nuremberg 2.0. What he just said when he was going on about market capitalization, which just sounds so, oh, woody, woody, woo, oh, look at all these billions. What this psychopathic degenerate is actually saying to you is, look, we can make so much money by just selling it to gang stalkers, total scum and trolls in your neighborhood who will be buying it, brain mutilating your clever kids, and then we can really make a lot of money. And the proles will be buying the weapons because they will be on a government grant to buy those weapons. So your taxpayer money will be used to buy the weapons that are going to be brain mutilating your children. Now, he is laughing his head off because he's on the money making side of it. You, your family and your grandparents and your parents will be screwed and you'll be dead before 2025. That's the plan. Yeah, and if you look, this is, I think, 31, 38, uh, he talks about new rent. And basically, he's talking about what you're talking about, assessment of neuropsychosocial factors and narratives, individual and group expressions and activities. So first, they assess individuals and groups, okay? And they assess narratives, and he's talking about brain narratives as well as narratives and groups, narratives and organizations, brain assessment and access approaches and bio tracking. We know all about that. Yes. FMR, MEG and brain recording applications for deck debt, whatever that is. Neuropharmacologics for affiliative enhancement. You see the language, it's so affiliative, you know, it's to convert the enemy to affiliate with you rather than be opposed to you. So yeah. this means I, I i think i'm just cottoning on to this let's just say it so slowly neuropharmacologics or neuropharmacologics where the hell do i put the emphasis is so long anyway it, it consists of neuro pharma and then logics which means it is the the study or the the science of drugs for the brain okay exactly so how can we stone you to such an extent that you will stop being a dissenter and a questioner and a crit critical thinker and you start flopping over and becoming passive and compliant and that's really what it's all exactly. about exactly because they want to enhance the, your affiliation with their crime cartel and what he's actually saying neuropharmacology to me sounds like well the the, the uh the drugs have to cross the blood brain barrier so we're talking nanotech here okay and the best way to do it is to, you know, to put something into your food, you know, or into your cosmetics or into absolutely anything, your drink, your coffee, your Starbucks coffee, mm -hmm. and then highlight the actual neural pathways. And then when you're thinking a certain thought to be shot in the head by the van that parks conveniently next to you, you know, mm -hmm. it's high precision at millimeter precision. So on techno, I already showed going to the, the shop and ending up with a bruise on my knuckle of a diameter of about four millimeters. That's with the accuracy with which they hit my knuckle and bruise the top. Now with the same accuracy, they can hit a, uh, an actual gland or a bit of your brain and just take out the nerve cells and brain mutilate you forever. That's what he's talking about. It's with the help of nanotech, you'll first map it and then you will be brain mutilated. Absolutely. And further on, he is very, you know, indeed graphic and, and uh, verbal about it. And uh, he talks about actually using nanotech to, to create clumps in the brain and uh, um, effectuate a stroke. Um, and if you look right below, it, he's talking about cognitive alteration, brain stimulation for cognitive alteration which is really assaulting your brain, taking over your brain cognition and cognitive processes and converting, assaulting, altering, modifying, 
and changing them utterly, you know, taking them over. And the, the very last one talks about devices, tiered integrated tracking and access networks. You know, they love their acronyms, don't they? Titan. These are Titan devices, indwelling devices for intentional identification and access, indwelling inside your brain. So you see, these brain scientists have really let their ability to manipulate the human brain go to their heads. And they have totally taken over the possibilities. And, you know, by the way, he, throughout his, um, his little project here, his video, towards the end especially, he starts talking about wolves. Now, he talks about crying wolf, being poised between crying wolf and chicken little. In other words, either underplaying or overplaying the threat here, being posed by neuroweaponry. And he says... There is really a wolf here. Well, we can see that. There is most definitely a wolf here with some very sharp canines. And this wolf has been in the making for decades. And it's been experimenting on those who are targeted, wrongfully and unlawfully targeted, you know, who are now being named mentally ill because that's the MO. To dismiss those who are reporting being victimized in this fashion, being assaulted in this fashion, being covertly, non-consensually assaulted in this fashion, you know. So um, that's also very interesting that that uh, metaphor of the wolf is being used. But um, that's, you know, that's what he's doing. As I said, this this particular video, it will make you so angry when you listen to it. I, gosh, yes, I, this is exactly why. I, first of all, I would like to thank um, Edward Spencer and, and you, Ramila, for bringing this on Techno, because I think this presentation and this man will be one of the major, you know, uh, uh, people charged in Nuremberg 2.0, because on his on his uh, slide, he already talks. I mean, the one that I'm, I, can you can you guys still see the one I have up now? Or has it disappeared? Oh, wait, I'm sharing my screen. Are you sharing? Oh, I'll stop I've sharing. Won. I'll stop okay. sharing if you are. Sorry, I I I I thought I was sharing. Um, I had I had another slide up, but let me stop sharing and we can see yours. I no no, it's it's okay because as um, do you want to stop? Okay, yes. Um, Hi, so Millicent. Millicent's back. Let me just share this one slide here that I just I was it took my breath away. This yeah. is. At, yeah minute mark 47 21 47 20 and he's talking about look at this okay trans or intracranial pulse stimulators so transcranial means through the skull intracranial means it's already in the skull so what it means is brain chips okay it's the the brain chips that all of your kiddies already had if they were born after 1986 or something okay if you're in the us all the kids already have brain chips guys now, what's this guy, this criminal psychopath who already knows about the brain chips, is just casually talking about is, oh, yes, well, you know, we, need, we take those intracranial pulse stimulators. Those are the brain chips in your children's heads. And now we're talking about neural network disruptors, as in confusion generators. So you know what, guys? If your child can't pay attention in school, that's probably why. It's already on the confusion generator, you know, experiment that this clinical psychopath is running in his little lab. He doesn't have to be at your child's school because he's just taking the mobile phone uh, network to communicate with your child's brain. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's absolutely, absolutely nothing because your child already has these brain chips. And talking about evidence, Catherine, there is another really very interesting interview that Elon Musk gave somebody. And he talked about neural lace and he said, oh, yes, these days we can just inject it. Exactly. So what can you inject but nanotech? You know, they're injecting nanotech into people. And they're yeah. doing this obviously surreptitiously. They're calling it a tetanus vaccine or they're calling it some other kind of vaccine. Um, you know, and also apparently it can be done when they draw blood through those very same syringes that are supposedly drawing blood. They can actually inject something into you. Yeah. So they're injecting this into you and he says it goes to the brain. He's talking about neural lace. So he's talking about self-assembling nanotech that's going to create neural networks in the brain that become these intracranial pulse stimulators that can be stimulated at will. Yeah, and look at the slide, because after the confusion generators, he says these uh, pulse stimulators are handheld, UAV, drone, or insect-borne. So he's talking about the technology that we have seen all the gang stalkers use on us 
These are handheld assault devices that pulse your head like the, the, the criminal thugs. By the way, one of them was a woman uh, with young children. She was a member of this crime cartel and she took out her mobile phone and pulsed my head. So this, um, you feel a shot that, you know, shoots through transcranially to your brain chips. It was a handheld assault device. Now the drones we have already seen and look at insect born, mm -hmm. insect born. Let's take that in. You know, I don't know what UAV is. I'm really rubbish with acronyms. Oh, it's uh, one of those drones, unmanned aerial vehicle. Ah, yes, unmanned aerial vehicle, of course. Yes, exactly. Um, and then look at this other thing when they want to do neuro ops of altered reality tactics. Mm -hmm. Completely coupled neural temporal function alteration as in time warpers. So Isn't that incredible. <laughs> yeah. What he's talking about is your children will go and they'll be staring at the TV for about eight hours and they will be dumb as nothing. Okay. Yeah. And that's it. And it will be done by DARPA and these criminal psychopaths like him. And look at it. Who the hell ever ordered this technology? Who no, and you know what's really interesting? Uh, it was kind of interesting kind of watching him maneuver the introduction of this entire conversation the, the, through the beginning parts of this video, actually. And one of the, and, but he finally came right out and said it. And I thought, you know, I wish I'd been a little fly in that room to watch the uh, reactions of all the people there. Because the tension that you yourself feel watching it kind of you know climaxes at that point when he says well this is being done for national security for surveillance for defense intelligence and these are very normative activities well he didn't use the word normative but that was the impression that he was trying to project that this is perfectly okay when you look at it from the point of view of we need to defend our country we need to surveil people we need to have this you know top intelligence and this is where intelligence is going today this so. is so sickening because actually this guy, by the way, I've just seen there's a comment from Millicent and I will read it out because Millicent's um, connection is being hacked again and she's silenced. But I uh, absolutely. So this is uh, this is exactly it. And, and um, what we need to understand now is that our entire government and certainly the entirety of the police force and the entirety of the secret services are not owned by the people anymore. They are wholesale owned by an organized global organized crime cartel. So when he talks about national security, the nation he's referring to is not America and the Americans. It is the nation of the crime cartel members that stretch all the way from the US to Israel, to Tokyo, to China. It's all one. And we have a dual state of organized crime members, which include doctors, lawyers, lawyers everything. And we've got the non-crime cartel members. And he is defending his nation of crime cartel members against you. And that's really the point I wanted to make as well. So it's it's under the guise of national security. It's under the guise of surveillance and intelligence. But what really is being developed is incredible neuroweaponry to be used against the populace at large. And remember, he talks about individuals, groups, and whole populations. He's talking about the whole of society, the whole of American society, the whole of German society, the whole of Swiss society, the whole of English society, the whole, this is Brave New World. World. You know, this is 1984. This is Agenda 2030, Agenda 21. This is global governance. This is what he's really talking about. What what we are the kind of world that we are living in today is a world that's you know cartel at one hand on at one level, and they are in the governments, the militaries, and the PDs and so forth, and the fusion centers. Perhaps not all not all the P, P's and the PDs uh, belong to them, but a lot of them do. You know, and we're talking about these Masonic networks. We're talking about a cartel kind of government layer, and then we're talking about humanity. We're talking about society, which, which comprises you and me. Absolutely. And by the way, as we were speaking, I suddenly remembered I wanted to show something on the show. I hope I can find it because, oh yes, here it is. Because when Siegfried Thomas and I, so, you know, when we're talking about which police officers and which police stations are in the crime cartel and which are not in it, it's very simple to tell. If you go there as a victim, do they ridicule you? Do they not want to hear your major victims? Then it means they are in the crime cartel. If they are shocked and they're trying to assist you, then they're not in the crime cartel. Now, I can say for sure that the police station in Unterengstringen is 100% in the crime cartel. Evidence number one, for two and a half years, they refused to assist me. 
Evidence number two, I gave them evidence of break-ins into my home. I had the police officers here photographing how Intel came in and split the wallpaper with the razor blades. And after the police was here, the police station is five houses down. I continue to have regular break-ins, regular house breaking, pretty much every single time I leave the home with my clothes smeared, my clothes cut, cut up. So this means the police station is in on it. But now I can show you, I've got two documents here. These are the documents. So what we handed in at the police station is, this is my neighborhood campaign. And you can see, I'm not sure if you can see the stamp of Kantons Polizei Zurich. This is Kantons Police Zurich. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm yeah, we can see it. Yeah. And it's signed by these people. And it was a Mr. Rode and uh, a Mr. I, I have to remind myself of his, I, I think Niffenegger was the second one. Now that was stamped. And Siegfried Thomas also did a neighborhood campaign. And here's the stamp there as well on the same date. And here's Siegfried Thomas's address proving that we were there and that um, Unter Engstringen police heard about it, okay? Now, the reason why I emphasize this is, as we found out going to the police station, the neighborhood campaign is fantastically successful. People in Unter Engstringen understand what this is about and they keep calling the police station because they are probably also suffering, just as I expected. Because and Catherine, before we forget, we should show your letter again, you know, because oh, on your website. Yes, people can uh, download it. Good point, because I, I already had a message over Twitter about a lady in uh, Germany who's also doing a neighborhood campaign. And um, I, I wanted to say that is the best thing you can do because people do want to know about it. So if you want to do a neighborhood campaign, go to stop007.org. Um, please go down to burning down the house of crime here with the flame. If you click on that and you scroll down, the neighborhood campaign is the one on the right, inform the neighbors and flyers, okay? So here you can get all the flyers that Ramola and Karen are using here about the DHS terrorist watch list scam in the US, US government abuses and notice of crimes against humanity. That's very important for flyering. And then uh, the, so the, these are already neighborhood campaigns. And then there's mine with a long letter and you can get the template in German and in English. And it contains, um, I think this one's the uh, open office file, but down here you can see what I have sent to my neighbors. And it contains detailed diagrams of how the radiation passes through multiple walls. And it always loses 50% of intensity, which means that after two walls, you're still getting a quarter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and other diagrams here about how it's reflecting back at your neighbors if you're being hit at in mm -hmm. I think, Catherine, I'd like to post that on my website as well, if I may. Post oh, your letter so people can see it. And, you know, there's one more source on the web they can go to and just uh, download the PDF, perhaps. That's, that would be great. And um, I also encourage everybody, if you do that and you do have a website, do what I did, which is also publish all the houses here in my region that you have informed because then the neighbors can come here and I'm, I'm linking my website in the letters and they can see, oh my goodness, yes, all the neighbors know. And as soon as everybody knows that everybody else knows, it's okay to talk about it. So at first they might talk about, oh my God, have you heard what this nutter just posted? But very quickly people will switch to, hang on a second, I've got this weird back pain, hang on. You know, my daughter has got cancer and she's really young. Hang on. And and then suddenly the hang-ons are coming. And I think mm. now the, the region of Unter Engstringen is waking up. So I would like to thank all the neighbors in Unter Engstringen who are calling the police station because that's what you have to do. And then please also watch the video I'm going to upload later today about how this is still going on. And I want to say that when we we're first met with these crimes, it seems so overwhelming. But when we whittle it down to it, this is all of this is done by key individuals who have a name, who have a home, who themselves have children in school, okay? And they we have got leverage over them. We can mm -hmm. go to them and say, what the hell are you doing? And that will be the next step, you know? That will be the next step because I am outraged that for two and a half um, years and after the neighborhood campaign, my two adjacent neighbors and this balcony to the south with the extra shielding behind the, the, the hedge, 
they continue to shoot at me and they are audible hits just hitting the outside of my bunker nonstop. Now, the other thing I'm outraged by explains why the police does nothing. Because when I went to Unterengstringen police station, what I saw on the till were flyers and it's these. And it says suspicion, uh, you know, if you have a suspicion call the, the emergency line and it says together against uh, burglars, but it has the all seeing eye. It has the mafia symbol from the police station. A police should know that this is a recognition symbol of the mafia, especially in the country where the mafia was founded just between Zurich and uh, Bern, okay? So this is the mafia. So why does the police say, oh, let's work together against burglars because they're saying one thing and they are denying it in the same letter. This is Illuminati cartel signaling. It, what it actually says is, fuck you. You know, we're burgling your house and there's nothing you can do about it because we're the police. You know, you would have to go to us and we don't give a damn because we're the ones burgling your house and we're in on it and we're probably making a lot of money of these weapons contracts and so on. Yeah, this is like the whole see something, say something. You know, I, um, as you know, I drove up to Vermont the last weekend and um, on the way, I think when we re-entered New Hampshire, I picked up a few um, flyers. Oh no, actually we were leaving Vermont. And so this was one of the welcome posts for Vermont. And I picked up a few brochures and one of them was a see something, say something from the local uh, DHS or Fusion Center. And I think the uh, intention over here is to give everybody the impression that we have to continuously maintain the stance of vigilance, you know, because there are going to be bad guys in the neighborhoods, et cetera. But I think it's high time for everybody to start challenging that BS because it's nothing but BS. As everybody knows, you know, people in our neighborhoods, in this particular neighborhood, I've talked frequently about cars zooming up and down and how I've done this for a request to the Fusion Center. The Fusion Center, by the way, in Massachusetts is headed by the Massachusetts State Police. So the chief of police wrote back to me, you know, um, when I asked about something else, not about these cars zooming up and down. He wrote back to me about, um, oh, public safety. Uh, he said um, he couldn't give me any information when I asked about the weapons that are being used, the non-lethal weapons, the less lethal weapons. You know, the same weapons that James Giordano is now openly speaking about, those weapons. So I'd asked about what surveillance tech is being used in Massachusetts and can you give me a list? And he said, well, in the interest of public safety, I can't give you any lists. So that's what he said to me, right? So I'm a human rights advocate. I'm asking in the interest of public safety and this is the nonsense I get from the chief of police. And I asked him why he was writing back to me, by the way. I said, why are you writing back to me? I was writing to the Fusion Center. And he wrote back saying, that's because I head the Fusion Center. I am the Fusion Center. <laughs> it fuses on my desk. The center fuses on my yeah, desk. Yeah, the center is on my desk. And the center is also zooming up and down my street. So when I put in these other four requests about, you know, this pattern of cars coming into my neighborhood in, in shifts, and zooming around the block and leaving in one direction and then being replenished in another direction, constant zooming, incredible. This is invasion of the neighborhood, you know? So I think everybody is well within their rights to question the Fusion Center about what the heck is going on. And nothing. That fell into a total vacuum and I got no responsive documents. So obviously the Fusion Center is partaking, participating and engaging in this activity. They are running it. I think They're running is, it. Yeah. You know, yeah. that we, we need to all wake up to is when I get this, I know that the police is running the burglaries and, and the, I should say, bur you know, housebreaking because they, they haven't burgled, they haven't stolen, well, they have stolen stuff of value and then returned it when I complain publicly. But, uh, you know, it, this means we're the mafia, we are running it. And um, one, one of the things I would like to say is that the way our intelligence agencies are set up and the police are set up, um, it is a, a structure, a system structure that is not just not resilient against deep capture. It invites it because of all the power and uh, the, the potential for exploitation of other people that is actually, you know, encoded in that office. So if you're a criminal and you're looking for, you know, a business plan and how to really um, exploit uh, those people who are not members of your crime cartel, you would move into the police and you would move into the secret services, use the compartmentalization and secrecy. And before long, we have the situation where we've got this war criminal that we've just seen, Giordano, talk about national security. I'm sorry, for the American people, what national security would be shooting him in the head. That would be a step up and then shooting all the other researchers in the head so they stop developing this stuff 
Because what's going on is that these guys, they where is the war? If we didn't have them, there would be no war because the rest of us, we, you know, going to our jobs, we're looking after children, we're, we're making dinner, and we're trying to keep families together. So where the hell is the war between from, you know, China? All there the way is no the war. And ask yourself also, why are people like us being surveilled? Why are we being surveilled? Why are we, we being surveilled nonstop, 24-7? So um, let me give you one little bit of info. You know, so I, we were driving up and all the way driving up from Massachusetts through New New Hampshire into Vermont, you know, beautiful countryside. And it's, um, it's mountainside. It's um, on a normal day, there wouldn't be any traffic. But of course, we have a target in the car. So there's traffic, there's traffic zooming on the left, there's traffic zooming on the right, following in front, you know, following at an angle, you know, sticking themselves in at a diagonal, etc. And hitting. So, you know, I was, so here's how I was hit. So there's something, I think those of you who are targets, those of you who've experienced this, and those of you who are are aware that we are being nanoteched, will know that nanobiosensors apparently are being accessed in our fingertips, in the tips of our tongue, on our noses, on different, different parts of the body, you know. And of course, there are RFID chips. If you've been covertly implanted, you will feel that pressure of frequency emission and transmission hitting those chips. And, you know, I can certainly attest to that. Um, But the other way in which they hit is also, so as they are driving, they are testing their sensor technology. They are testing their sensor, uh, what is the word, tracking technology. They're testing it as they're driving by. They're also hitting you from cell towers as you drive by. I notice it particularly as we approached cell towers, I would feel intense waves of heat, you know, which kind of subsided as we crossed them. So literally, I was hit in the face throughout as I was driving and as I and as we were staying at this hotel in Vermont in Burlington, Vermont, by the way. And this is the other thing, beautiful tourist location on Lake Champlain, Vermont, Burlington, Vermont. It's a university city, right? University town, tons of young kids around there supposedly college professors, etc. Well, the same old story, the stalking story, the color coding, the psyops, the mean so all of this nonsense is going on even in Burlington, Vermont. Going on in New Hampshire, going on in Vermont. As we were coming back, we were sitting at a Pinero, young couple sitting there with their cell phones busily tracking, pointing, looking at each other, grinning. You know, so so this is what's happened. We've got a spy society going on. Half half our society probably three-fourths, probably 95%, has been taken over by these fusion centers and intel agencies, giving people to understand that they are doing a great good for the country, right? Because they're tracking these horrific, dangerous people, and they're tracking them on their cell phones constantly, and they're directing hits, and so on and so forth. And it's absolutely horrifying. But you see these young kids engaging in it. You know, they're teaching young kids, teenagers, college students, to engage in this BS behavior. So I experienced all of that, you know, going, coming there while I was there, et cetera. However, I did have a beautiful holiday. I did enjoy the lake. We took some hikes and walks and, you know, I ignored all this nonsense and I focused on the beauty of nature. So um, I can't say I'm well rested. I was sleep deprived uh, (laughs) at the hotel and I could see from where I could see trucks parked across, you know, with interstate across them and guys in neon standing out there. You know, these guys act as if, this is the mafia, by the way, this is the crime cartel. They're working through the DHS. How else could they be interested? You know, they're working through the DHS and the FBI, but they are the mafia and they are hitting people who are speaking out and engaged, active, awake, concerned citizens in the population. That's who they're hitting. You're muted, Catherine. Actually, the um, you know, the the uh, the criminal and traitor Michael Hayden, who has been exposed several times by you know high-level whistleblowers as exactly that, as a criminal and traitor. Uh, so this criminal, Michael Hayden, uh, publicly stated that the uh, NSA and the CIA are not interested in terrorists. They are interested in interesting people. And what that means in, in plain English is that these old perverts want to have you know, young women, typically I think your, your, your daughters in school and also young boys you know, in, in primary school, 
uh, to perv at. That's interesting for them. They really dislike intelligent women and they like to mutilate them to death really slowly. And we've got lots of deaths exactly in that category. Um, so they find interesting women they can mutilate, children they can rape, uh, people they can perv on, and they really love killing. So if you've got an elderly parent, they're interested in your elderly parent because they want to have to kill and, you know, they need to train their kiddies how to kill. So they will use your elderly parents. So this is what Michael Hayden actually said. Uh, when we when we understand and put this whole picture together. But it's true what you're saying. Uh, you know, the DHS is the mafia. And um, what we have is not a spy society. We have a criminal society, just like East Germany was a criminal society. And the Stasi was a criminal organization run by the Masons, just like the Nazis were run by the Masons as the, the Vatican, the front, the Masons are the Vatican front, a Vatican front for, for Vatican intelligence. Uh, and, and I just wanted to, I'm sharing my screen again, as you can see, and I just wanted to show you this one slide as you were speaking, Catherine, because what um, Giordano talked about here in this video again, about weaponizable neuroscience and tech. If you look at one, two, three, and four, one is assess, predict, and control what people are thinking, what people are feeling and their behaviors. Two is supposedly mitigate aggression and foster, mitigate aggression, okay? So the, 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 the military likes to get away with that, that they're mitigating aggression. Foster cognitions of emotions and behaviors of affiliation or passivity. Basically, they want to dumb you down and retard your children. And three, incub this is very, very important because they're doing this already. And they're doing this to those interesting individuals, which is us. Incur burdens of morbidity, disability, or suffering, and in this way, neutralize potential opponents. Or four, induce mortality. Yes. So, so he's coming right out and saying, yes, they're going to make you sick. They're going to make you very, they're going to make you suffer and they're going to make you dead. Exactly. And, and this is their methodology of neutralizing potential opponents. Yeah. And in this particular slide, and I'm so glad he put his mug on this video, um, because what I hope the American people wake up to, and you have to realize that this satellite system to brain mutilate you, if you just think about, you know, going up against the crime cartel is already in place. So at some point we need to start thinking about how to kill these people. I advocate going into court and getting a court order for the permission, the license to kill these people. People like Gina Haspel and people like this guy need to be lawfully killed. They need to be exterminated from the surface of the earth because they are psychopathic degenerates. There's an ongoing war that only exists in their head. And the truth is they are brain damaged individuals. They are degenerates. And the only thing that they know is how to reproduce and how to kill. That's the only thing that these people are capable of. Catherine, you should remember we are talking about whole bodies of people, however. Gina Haspel, James Giordano, they are sort of the tip of the iceberg. You know, they're just two little figureheads. There's a whole bunch of them. This is where the billions and hundreds of billions of dollars are going in. You know, they're going in to, to create this kind of thinking, this kind of mentality, where, and of course, to create the science and technology, which is extremely destructive to the human, to the human, to humanity, to all of human society. So this is, uh, this is huge amounts of money is being poured into this enterprise. Huge numbers of people are being supported by this enterprise. So imagine a whole group of military researchers, you know, neuroscientists. Psy psy psychologists, psychiatrists, all of them working within the military intelligence paradigm to take over the human brain. You know, so literally this is sort of, we're seeing the fruition of that long arc of projection, projection all the way from, um, you know, Tavistock, Delgado, etc., all the way Ewan Cameron, Sidney Gottlieb, all of the MK Ultra experiments, all the way to now, you know, to to complete takeover of the human brain. So um, they have had time and huge amounts of money. Well, they manufacture money right out of thin air. That's what these banks do. So they've had a lot of time and money to establish, to entrench these sciences. And now they're at a the point of extreme sophistication. 
but they have this ability. So they, and now they're at the point of beginning to expose and um, show a little bit of what they are doing and present it in such ways that they imagine that they're garnering consent from the people watching it. So, you know, really, we are at a point in history, I think, where people need to wake up. Humans, the normal, average, everyday human being needs to wake up. You know, not the people in the military and intelligence who are a part of this. They are a part of this. They are part of this cartel that's engaging in this. The rest of humanity needs to wake up, understand what's being done, what's down the pike. What's not just down the pike. It's actually right here. It's being done already, right? The stuff is being operated and used on people, this kind of tech. So um, they are indeed doing this. So the question that needs to be asked is, well, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to sit back and let them do this? Exactly. Absolutely. And I think um, when, when we are putting all these puzzle pieces together, um, you know, we, we have to remind ourselves that what he said about, you know, uh, inducing suffering and inducing, you know, morbidity and, and all this sort of stuff. Um, what he's talking about is also lucrative things like inducing Alzheimer's by just um, frying the Great brain point. Of, of your uh, parents, you know, um, and also this entire story about Kreutzfeldt Jakobs, you know, the, the mad, mad cow disease. And suddenly there were these massive holes in the brain. And then we, we were led to believe that this is from proteins. I'm sorry, but the laws of physics say that you can't really have a protein, you know, actually make massive mass disappear, puff into thin air. But you can have microwaves and then fry a brain. You, you can do that very well, actually. So for me, the, the mad cow disease was actually testing electromagnetic weapons on the cows and, and leaving the, the farmers with the damage when the cows got brain mutilated and then making up a fake disease like a, what was it called? A fibromyalgia or whatever the hell. Fibromyalgia. Exactly. I think these are all fake. They are entirely fake, made up pseudo diseases to cover up the systematic mutilation with these directed energy weapons because they do not make any flipping sense and then there's many other details that you can uh, work out yeah um, and as you said they're creating patients you know they create disorders they create symptoms of horrific diseases they name new diseases and then they've got new patients for the pharma industry for the medical industry the surgical industry you know exactly. so unfortunately we're also talking about very unethical doctors who are involved in this kind of thing we know the farm farm uh, you know the entire pharmaceutical industry is filled with unethical people yeah. so yeah so that's there too but I, I think you know now because the situation is so desperate and with desperate i mean that i had to to finish the affidavit template i had to go to mcdonald's because the machine gunning into my study into my flat from two neighbors whom i know and another one was so intense i had to flee and uh, as I'm sitting here, I can exactly what he talks about, the targeted brain mutilation. I, could, I can hear and I can feel it because there's one side of my metal shed I haven't insulated and I keep being shot in the head. So this is real people. But one of the things I want to say is that in all of this, there are actual key individuals doing it. It's not just anybody. We know that Lockheed Martin is running the gang stalking in 47 out of 50 states at least. So Lockheed Martin and the CEO of Lockheed is personally responsible. Yes, we have to hold the CEOs responsible. We have to hold the figureheads and all of these companies responsible. But, but more than that. You know, the, what the in-power movement is doing with slamming notices of liability on people, that's what we have to look into. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And, and, and that's a very um, brilliant thing because also what the in-power movement does is it says if you're being uh, damaged or, you know, your body is being used or somehow harmed and you can't make them stop, it's you're totally within your right to say, okay, you're using me. There's nothing I can do about it, but you can't have me for free. Here's my fee schedule. And then have two, two million pounds per day of being used for, for, you know, absolutely. I, I think we could very quickly bankrupt these companies. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we have to do. And then it's about the enforcement side of it. And that's where it starts to get interesting because you can get a court order, but how do you make them stop if you have satellite systems and so on? And that's exactly the moment that no one likes to talk about it, but we need to talk about it at some point because that's the moment when we have to call the military in and we have to say to the military, you need to kill these people. Because we already heard from Midge Mattis that her former partner or husband or whatever runs a telecommunication company, Don, what's his name or something Don? 
Um, I don't know his name. Exactly. But he's, we have to look up the interview with Mitch Matters. But he's got a telecommunication company. He's a complete psychopath. And he went through all the satanic rituals. He's got the forked tongue because he, he had it snipped so that he can look even more like a snake. <laughs> okay. And this totally wacko, crazy psychopath is running the telecommunication system that is going to kill you and your children. So the question is, what do we do? If you get a court order and he's so messed in the head, he's got his fork, his tongue forked, right? He might be a bit too psychopathic to stop. So that's the moment where, where we have to say, hang on a second. It's either court order, it's death if they don't comply. And uh, we have to start getting all these lists and returning to the affidavit template. At the very end, there's a list of perpetrators and it's super important because we need to publish the perpetrators. And you have... You have yeah, two- I think ultimately the people who, who do occupy public positions, you know, are liable, right? They are yeah. liable. Yes, but the question is how do you enforce it? And the real problem is, for example, take my case. I have two neighbors either side who are massively involved. They are machine, they are being paid to put up weapons and their weapons are being steered automatically by AI, by an integrated system, probably to do with Lockheed Martin or an equivalent um, weapons company. Now they did not stop for two and a half years because they're getting rich off my murder. Now, how do we make them stop? How do we make Swiss Intel stop or the FBI stop? We have to name individuals, but we have to name the, the, the CEOs, the heads of the FBI, but we have to name everybody, the gang stalkers, your neighbors, because if we only name the head of the FBI, they will replace the head of the FBI. And in the meantime, these people will continue mutilating you because there's no incentive for them to stop. Yes, I think every neighbor that you have witnessed being involved needs to be named. Yes, absolutely. With the actual statement of what makes you think this person is involved. So I just wanted to say for those people who are interested in the affidavit, there is a section at the end for perpetrators and you can name perpetrators publicly or you can name them privately. And then it only goes to the JIT. But this is exactly what we need to do. We need to start identifying them. And at the, we are very, very close to a civil war because as people wake up and realize they have been mutilated in a premeditated fashion and their children have been mutilated at school by the likes of James Giordano and the likes of Gina Haspel, that's the moment when we're teetering on a civil war because we have these swarms of organized criminals who already have an interconnected mobile phone system. They already have the vans with the weapons. Here in Unterengstringen, what do we do in Unterengstringen to make these people stop? At some point, the, the Swiss population has to stop these vans and has to search the vans themselves for these electromagnetic weapons because Mr. Schoch and his friends have not been doing it for two and a half years. And they well, they're also in the houses, you know, over here in the US, they use, um, I think we should start calling them crack fusion houses. They used to be crack houses, right? And now they've got fusion houses. But they've just got these, you know, Kazarian mafia boys um, sitting out here, mafia boys and proxies, um, boys and minions. It's so it's used crack houses. It's also cracked in and it's a fusion center. So it's a fused crack house, you know. Yeah, it is. And, you know, you see them go in and out, you know, total transient population in, in, in every little corner of the block, uh, quite a few houses. So um, and you know that the weaponry is inside there. And they're also using, you know, the they're using the infrastructure, the power utility grid and the infrastructure. So if you've got power lines coming in from, you know, across the street, um, you've got, I think there are indeed surreptitious lines that are being brought into people's houses, you know, so that they, then they use the wiring in the, in the house to create a giant electromagnet, pr- probably, and then, you know, sort of um, in some way um, exacerbate what they are doing. Actually, you know, an already known and established technology of, of doing that is the following. Um, you already ha- can um, buy these Wi-Fi or WLAN amplifiers, which is just something that you stick into the socket and then your Wi-Fi signal is traveling over the, um, um, the, the power lines. Okay. Oh, but, right. They do that. Yeah. But what that means is that suddenly your entire house, everywhere there, where there's a power um, line, will start acting as a WLAN uh, unit, as a Wi-Fi router, okay? 
So if you have body implants, and we already have the scientific paper that says the, the um, communication protocol for these body area networks, it's exactly the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and, and all that sort of stuff. So if you have a body area network that can communicate over the Wi-Fi frequencies, um, all they need to do is put one of these little um, you know, power line amplifiers into the walls of your house when you don't notice, and your body chips can be triggered, not just by your Wi-Fi router, which you can switch off or remove, but anywhere where there's a power socket. And then there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So there's all sorts of little tricks, I think. And some people have indeed found all sorts of strange cables buried just outside their house and things like that. So, um, you know, and there's induction as well, right? Um, so they can do so many things these days in terms of electrifying or electromagnetizing your environs um, to make it dangerous for use. And unfortunately, that kind of thing is going on. So as you say, not just should the cars be stopped, you know, these houses should be opened. Yeah. Um, and somebody with this kind of awareness, you know, a radio frequency engineer or an electrical engineer or yeah. both of them working in tandem should be doing this kind of investigative work uh, in order to free our communities again. So there's a lot that needs to be done. I've got planes flying over here nonstop. And um, we have to wrap this up. So if there's any last things we need to tell people, oh, do really? watch that video, you know. Millicent, exactly. Sorry. Yes, do watch the video. And, and sorry, we forgot to mention what Millicent wanted to say. Oh. She said, I'm still silenced, but please tell them about thought injection, neuro-linguistic programming, and subliminal messaging that is being used to create a false illusion that we are thinking criminal thoughts when it's really NASA uh, slash Navy developed thought injection. Now, what Millicent is talking about is already one step ahead because she knows that we are being brain monitored and what these criminal psychopathic degenerates and the police are trying to do is they want to say, oh, we want to find out if she's thinking criminal thoughts. But remember that they are the crime cartel. So what that means in plain English is they want to already know if you're even thinking about going up to, to the, um, you know, up against the crime cartel so that they can give you a heart attack, you know? So this is what it's about. But um, Millicent says that on paper, at least, they are saying we are monitoring these people to find out if they're thinking criminal thoughts. And she's saying, hang on, your criminal thoughts, should there any ever be any, can be externally injected. So you're just a normal person going about your business and suddenly through synthetic telepathy and through the head chips that you don't even know you have, you can be made to think any sort of thoughts, even criminal thoughts. And then you're thinking the criminal thoughts and they're reading them out and they say, aha. Well, both, well, both Millicent and Omni have reported, and, you know, actually many others that I've spoken to have reported this kind of pumping in of horrific images into their heads, you know, and, and the backs of their retinas, etc. These are electronic or synthetic images that are injected into their brains. And some of these are pornographic images. Some of these are pedophilic and pedosadist images. So when they do this kind of um, pumping in of these horrific images, the intention and Omni has spoken about this quite succinctly. I think he's written about it on many of his websites as well. The intention is entrapment. Because remember, this is what the FBI thrives on. So they, they are indeed, as Giordano stands witness to, they are indeed engaging in neurosurveillance, neuromonitoring, and neuropolicing you know, calling it neuro crime. But what they're also engaged in is essentially neuro entrapment. So one agency possibly pumps in the images and the other agency harvests the images or one compartment in an agency, you know, pumps in and the other compartment um, harvests or examines, does the neuro imaging to find out what the images are. I mean, they find these images, they say, oh my goodness, this person is a pedophile or a pedosadist or a pornographer or whatever. And, um, you know, therefore we have to, uh, but this is this goes down in their record, and this is this this uh, this explains why this justifies what we are doing. You know, we are trying to save humanity. We are trying to save society. We are so virtuous, and we are keeping people from this horrific person who's all possibly a serial killer or a pedophile, or whatever. So, so that's exactly what they're doing, and I think that is what Millicent is pointing to, and what Omnia is pointing to, that they are able to do this. And it's very much, if you look at it from the point of view of what the FBI and CIA are already doing, it's sort of like the whole war on terror, right? You've got the war on terror, and then you've got the terrorism creation center, 
right? And that's ISIS, Al-Qaeda, whatever else, you know, species of group they wish to create and put out there as the next best horrific terror operation. And then you come up with, oh, you know, our children are becoming uh, radicalized and becoming extremists, our right-wingers and left-wingers, just by, they want to go and fight in Syria and they want to go fight in, you know, wherever. And, um, this extremist thing is huge. So we've got to have the countering violent extremism program. And we've got to watch these kids and we've got to monitor them from the time they are, you know, it's five years old, right through their teenage years. And this, you know, we're doing this great service to society. So this is how they're doing it. This is exactly how they're doing it. And they're doing it now at the neural level as well. So that's sort of what um, Millicent's talking about, thought injection. And then there's subliminal me messaging and neurolinguistic programming as, as well, which I think is a vast subject, right, NLP? Absolutely. So. And um, a lot of the NLP is being done um, through um, ear implants that you don't even know um, that you have them. And they are repeating stuff. And eventually it sounds like your own idea or your own thoughts. But actually you're, you're hearing it, but it's so quiet. Only your, your brain can decipher it and you're not hearing it. So you can be brainwashed into using yeah. certain vocabulary and, um, and things like that. But I'm um, absolutely sorry about this because um, I, I basically had to put up shielding because the, the attacks were getting ever more serious. But um, I, um, I'm not just making this as, as a show. This is how I have to work all throughout. Occasionally, I just like Ramola. Who is, uh, well, know. I was going to say that's when I sit on the couch, I have one of these big thingies, you know, slammed right up against me because if not, I'm hit right on the side of my head, um, you know, or end of the heart. So... I just sit like that. I don't have a nice metal ship, though well, I need one. Not enough. It's a, this is basically it. It's, um, this exotic physics is punching through a lot of things. And um, the fact that it's punching through proves automatically that it's military technology and the military is involved. So this is the Swiss military and Swiss secret services exterminating the Swiss population. Um, and I think the fact that people are calling the police station, just as I, I expected, um, already means that Swiss people are already being genocided here in Ontengstingen. I knew that that was the case because they have to kill, um, I think 30% of the Swiss people is the target. Um, and this is according to the private intelligence uh, service, deagle.com, that seems to be pretty spot on. And they seem to update their genocide numbers on a, I think not quite weekly, but on a monthly basis. Um, yeah, and unfortunately this is the reality. But one of the things, and my last sentence, um, what is that um, what is happening right now, there, there are people to blame and they are less than 500 meters away from me. The person to blame for this right now is the next door lady who put up this weapon, which is why I can block it by just having the shielding panel at this angle. So I know it's her. I can also sometimes hear impact sounds on the other side, um, but there are other people. So she can be identified. Uh, Mr. Schoch and Wendelin Koch, the two police officers in Unterengstringen, they are personally uh, responsible. And then, of course, uh, Jean-Philippe Godin, the, the new head of Swiss Intel, who's a military man, um, he is responsible for running this program, and it was Marco Seiler before him. He, they are paying the gang stalkers. They are running this. And what we have to do now is that we have to collect these lists of names, and we have to put these people into jail, and we have to get the entire list of gang stalkers out of them because the gang stalkers have been given weapons and they have been trained in the use of these weapons and they will turn on the non-criminal part of the population at the, the, the smallest indication. So we need those lists. We need the list of criminals. They've already turned. I mean, you know, think about it. Those who are being targeted today are the non-criminal portion of the population. It's not terrorists who are being hit. Everybody who's being targeted is, is either an activist, a concerned citizen who speaks out, a civic-minded citizen, um, you know, or just some other person who's spoken out, a whistleblower, somebody who's spoken out against corruption in whatever sphere of uh, influence their work takes them. Mm -hmm. So that's unfortunately what's going on. We are living in a very upside-down, topsy-turvy kind of society. And, you know, so in any case, what I would suggest is people, please watch that video to understand the, um, the importance of this time period that we're living in currently. Because this person, Mr. James Giordano, Mr. or Doctor, is um, actually giving us a lot of disclosure about the incredible range of neuroweapons that are being used today on people. And he does indeed disclose that they are being used. He does not use the word target, and well, he actually does use the word target. 
but he doesn't talk about targeted individuals per se. But I think we can read between the lines. Um, that that video is definitely going to make a lot of people really angry because it actually spells out such horrors. Um, but do watch that video. Also, please look at um, Catherine's letter and please employ and deploy that particular letter in your own neighborhoods, wherever you are in the world. Because literally, it's, it's um, informing the neighbors that when somebody is being hit in the neighborhood, so are they and so are their children. You know, so that's something to wake people up to about the horrors of radiation being directed at them as well. And um, and then the affidavit, right? So the affidavit is all ready. It's on your website and people can download it. No, 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 not yet. Not yet. What's what's up on the website is the final proofreading draft. Oh, okay. The, uh, the proofreading is completed. The The affidavit template will be released. Um, If I'm quick to tonight at midnight, that's my goal. And okay. then tomorrow. So sometime so this time, week. Um, yeah, by the time okay. people get up, it should be there. Wow, that's pretty fantastic. All right. So, okay. So time to celebrate. We're getting the affidavit. Absolutely. <laughs> We're fighting back now. Finally. Yeah, brilliant. Wonderful. So I guess at this point, we'll just thank everyone for watching and um, hang in there. We will see you next week. Thank you very much. And I will stop the live stream. So bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye. -bye. bye.